dear students welcome to my channel dr v r pudli professor of management and economics i am doing a series of videos on capital structure theories in this video i am dealing with net operating income theory or net operating income approach shortly known as noi approach capital structure theories net operating income theory or net operating income approach shortly known as noi approach there is a view point that strongly supports the close relationship between leverage and value of a firm in other words it supports that there existed an optimal capital structure the optimum capital structure may be defined as the capital structure or combination of debt and equity that leads to the maximum value of the firm there is an equally strong body of opinion which believes that financing mix or the combination of debt and equity has no impact on the shareholders wealth and the decision on financial structure is irrelevant in other words there is nothing such as optimum capital structure these views are reflected in capital structure theories important capital structure theories include one net income theory or net income approach two net operating income theory or net operating income approach three modigliani and miller approach or mm theory and four traditional theory or traditional approach net operating income theory or noi approach this theory is proposed by durand this approach is diametrically opposite to the ni approach the essence of this approach is that the capital structure decision of a firm is irrelevant any change in leverage will not lead to any change in the total value of the firm and the market price of shares as well as the overall cost of capital are independent of the degree of leverage the net operating income approach is based on the following propositions the noi approach to valuation argues that the overall capitalization rate ko of the firm remains constant for all degrees of leverage the equity capitalization rate or cost of equity capital shortly known as ke increases with the degree of leverage the cost of debt shortly known as ki has two parts a explicit cost which is represented by the rate of interest irrespective of the degree of leverage the firm is assumed to be able to borrow at a given rate of interest this implies that the increasing proportion of debt in the financial structure does not affect the financial risk of the lenders and they do not penalize the firm by charging higher interest
the second part of cost of debt is implicit or hidden cost increase in the degree of leverage causes an increase in the cost of equity capital this increase in ke being attributable to the increase in debt is the implicit part of ki thus the advantage associated with the use of debt supposed to be a cheaper source of funds in terms of the explicit cost is exactly neutralized by the implicit cost represented by the increase in ke optimal capital structure according to net operating income approach the total value of the firm is unaffected by its capital structure no matter what the degree of leverage is the total value of the firm will remain constant the market price of shares will also not change with the change in the debt equity ratio there is nothing such as an optimum capital structure any capital structure is optimum according to net operating income approach dear students in this slide i had given graphical presentation of net operating income theory in this diagram i had taken degree of leverage on x axis cost of equity capital shortly known as ke cost of debt shortly known as ki overall cost of capital shortly known as ko in terms of percentage are shown on y axis we can observe that ko is parallel to x axis and ki is also parallel to x axis we can observe that as the degree of leverage increases cost of equity capital is increasing in the diagram to summarize due to the assumption that ko and ki remain unchanged as the degree of leverage changes we find that both the curves are parallel to the x axis but as the degree of leverage increases the ke increases continuously dear students in this video i had dealt with net operating income theory or net operating income approach shortly known as noi approach thank you